everybody and welcome to the latest episode of All About Fasting. And today I have the pleasure to speak to Jerome Lai, who works as a doctor at the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinic at Le Constance in Überlingen. Hello, Jerome. It's nice to have you. Thank you for coming. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm very pleased to be here and to speak a little bit about fasting and about techniques that you might um, that might help to support your fasting. Exactly. That's the topic of today. Um, it's so nice that you're here because we got uh, those questions quite often. People are fasting at home, have certain symptoms, don't know what exactly to do and if there's a way to treat them. And I have the pleasure to have an expert here explaining today what you can do at home. Jerome, I was just fasting myself in Mabea with a group of other peoples and some fasted for the first time and of course you can imagine there were some symptoms popping up and um, also we got the question quite often from the audience. Can you quickly speak about what are the most common symptoms that people might uh, undergo when they are fasting? Of course. First of all, I'd like to say that when I speak of fasting, I'd like to refer to the a periodic fasting according to the Buchinger Wilhelmi method, which means that you have an intake of around about 250 calories a day. You drink two to three liters of water per day and you t participate in a complex program, including physical exercise and active relaxation. But then, of course, because you're not having a daily life routine, of course, because you're fasting um, and obviously you're not eating the same way as you do normally. So it is possible that you have symptoms. That's quite clear because your body will experience a switch in the um, metabolic pathways where you will have ketone bodies that will serve as energy um, source. So, of course, there might be some symptoms that might occur. But before telling you some of the symptoms, I'd like to say also to take away a little bit the fear that there might be symptoms, um, that with a good preparation um, to do a fasting actually can really reduce symptoms to a minimum. And usually fasting really is a very, very good experience in most cases. What are those preparation met methods? Um, first of all, I think it's very useful to have a good mindset. So you really want to do the fasting and you're prepared to do the fasting. That would be the first step. Then you need time to do the fasting, which is also very important. Um, and then you have a preparation. You can prepare yourself by, for example, um, changing your nutrition beforehand, which means you decrease uh, the intake of alcohol, of fabricated sugar, of animal protein and of the quantities. And of course, you can reduce the intake of coffee, green or black tea. If you respect those things, actually fasting is, is really good. Nevertheless, like I said, there can be some symptoms that might occur. Um, some of those symptoms are getting headaches, um, sleeping disturbances, abdominal problems like feeling bloated, or you even have abdominal discomfort, neck pain, back pain or even musculoskeletal pain in general. Um, you have a sensitivity to cold. Cold feet are quite common. Those are some of the most common symptoms that we experience on, on our daily life routine in our clinic and that have also been shown in one of our research studies um, coming from the clinic that have been done in 2019 with 1,400 participants. Yeah, of course, um, in the clinics, we have a huge setup of doctors and nurses who take our patients um, safely and securely through the fasting process. But for those who are fasting at home, do you have some recommendations how they can treat the most common symptoms? Of course, there are some very nice treatments. Um, maybe the first thing that, that should be mentioned is whenever you have a symptom which you cannot, which you don't know and you're insecure, of course, it is a good idea to, to go and see your treating doctor just to ask and to be sure that there's nothing behind that. Other than that, there are some really nice things. The first step that you can do at home is to ask yourself, did you drink enough? Did you maybe respect your limits, especially concerning physical exercise? And did you rest enough? Um, and did you maintain uh, the limits in general? So I think um, a good equilibrium between physical exercise and resting is very important. But then 
I would like to um, present four of the most common um, do-it-yourself strategies that you can easily repeat at home and that can be done. So those four would be a lav lavender oil hard compress, the um, a brush massage or dry brushing, um, a cold and warm alternating foot bath, and in the end, um, a caraway oil abdominal compress. So I would like to start with a lavender oil hard compress. This is one of my favorite, to be honest, because it is very easily done. You just need a small towel like this. Um, you need a bigger towel like this. And of course, you need lavender oil. Although in that case, it is sufficient. You don't need the 100% um, essential oil. It is sufficient to have a diluted oil where you have 5 to 10% of lavender oil. You take the lavender oil, you take round about a soup spoon full of lavender oil or the handful, you rub in your chest region with that. Then you take the small towel, you drench it in cold water, you wring it out and you put it over your chest region. And afterwards you take the big towel, you wrap it around your body, very so you're really tucked in. Then you lay down, cover yourself and stay for 30 minutes round about. And the indication to do that is if you have palpitations, anxiety, if you feel nervous, and if you have sleeping disturbances, then you can definitely try, try out uh, the lavender oil hard compress. It's very easy, it's really nice, and it doesn't have a secondary effect. The next do-it-yourself strategies that I would like to present is a cold and warm alternating foot bath or contrast foot bath. It's also very easy. For that, you just need two buckets. Ideally, they go up to your knees. So you need two of those. One of the bucket you fill with cold water, as cold as possible. You could even add some ice tubes. The other one you fill with warm water, 40 degrees at the maximum. That would be um, the ideal temperature. Then you start to, um, to put your feet in the warm bath. Like I said, ideally, the water would go up to the knees. You stay in there for 10 minutes. Then you change into the cold bath for 10 seconds. Then you change again to the warm bath for five minutes. And then you change back to the cold for 10 seconds. So you always end with the cold. And that's already it. When would you use it? When you feel like having sleeping disturbances to begin with, it's very good to do it before falling asleep. If you have headaches, it can really help. If you have cold feet or if you're freezing in general, it can be very good. And if you have beginning colds, so you see you have already um, a vast variety of symptoms that you can easily treat with the contrast foot bath. Of course, it might be that you don't have buckets at home. In those cases, you can also go to your shower and use the water hose in best cases, you take off the shower head so that you have a close water jet. And then you can do the alternating hot and cold water applications to your leg. So that would be better. Although I would recommend the buckets because you can really relax and it's easier done. And of course, you can maintain the 10 minutes and five minutes of um, warm water bath. The next do-it-yourself at home strategy I would like to present is the caraway oil abdominal compress. It's also very easily done. For that you need, of course, caraway oil. Usually you will get it from a pharmacy, but you will get it as an essential oil of 100%. So this needs to be diluted down with an olive oil, for example, to 2 to 5% roundabout. Of that you take a handful of or around about one soup spoonful of oil and you rub in your your stomach, your ab abdomen um, clockwise. So in the way that your um, digestive tube works, then you take again one of the small towels. You drench it in that case in warm water. You wring it out. You put it on your on your belly. Again, you tuck yourself in with a bigger towel and in the end, you take a hot water bottle and put it on top. 
Then you lay down, you cover yourself and you stay for 30 to 45 minutes. When would you use a compress like that? Um, it's really in the field of when you feel bloated, if you have abdominal pain, maybe cramps, then it really can be very helpful and um, relaxing and it can take away those symptoms, for example. The last do-it-yourself strategy that, that I would like to present is the dry brushing or a brush massage that you can do yourself. To use that, you need, of course, you need a brush. In best cases, it should have natural bristles. So it can be one of those um, models, but you will see when you when you go on the internet or you go on in specific shops, you will find all kinds of different brushes. So in the end, it does not matter as long as they have natural brushes so that you don't injure your, your skin. And then if you respect um, two easy rules, it's a very nice do-it-yourself strategies. Those rules are that whatever you do, you always go towards your heart region. And the second thing is, of course, don't apply too much pressure. Then if you have the brush, um, the best way to, to use it would be in the morning, just after you get up. In best cases, even um, in front of an open window, so you have the fresh air. You take the brush and usually you start with your right foot on the outside part. You do the brush movements or the strokes in, in circles and you go up your leg towards your heart region. So you start at the outside, then you go to the inside and you go up the leg. Don't forget the plant of your feet. Then you switch side, you go to the other side. Then you take your right arm, also on the outside part, and you go up to your shoulder. You switch to the inside part, you go up to your shoulder. Don't forget your palm. You change to the left arm and the inside part. Then if you have the possibility, you have even a stick and you can go to your back. First you would do your neck region and then you go lower. Also you do circles on your back. And in the end, you end with your chest and your abdominal part. So you see, it's very easy. It's done in five minutes. And you can do it when you're fatigued, when you're low in energy and you want to get well, more energy and you want to feel vitalized, then it's, it's, a very, it's a very nice strategy that can easily be done and repeated. And it supports the idea of fasting and of detoxifying. Actually, we even say it's like having a coffee of the person who fasts in the morning. Well, thank you so much for sharing the do-it-yourself tips. I, some of them I even didn't know, and I fasted now the sixth time. Um, can you tell us if those strategies can be re repeated regularly and if there are some contraindications? Actually, it, it is even recommended to do some of those do-it-yourself strategies regularly. Like, for example, the alternating hot and cold foot bath or even the dry brush. So it is not the fasting, it can be done outside even of the fasting and done regularly. Since it is a, a training um, of your metabolism, of the blood circulation, and it's, it's, it's really nice. But also the lavender oil hard compress or even the caraway oil compress on the abdomen can be done regularly. It does not, it is not necessary that, that it has to be during fasting, but during fasting it is really something that can really easily be done and it, and it helps to support you and to reduce symptoms. Concerning contraindications, there are very few. Usually, usually you don't have any specific secondary effects. Of course, if you have skin issues, eczema or even injuries or inflammation, you should not use some of the compresses. Concerning the alternating hot and cold water foot bath, it is recommended not to use it when you have problems with your blood circulations in your legs. Other than that, there is no contraindications of using some of those do-it-yourself strategies. And like I said, whenever you feel like it and you have the symptoms, just try it out. In the end, you just can have a benefit out of it. Thank you so much for sharing your tips and recommendations and experience. Uh, I hope everybody found them beneficial and helpful. If you have additional questions, then just comment below. We might answer them in one of the next videos. 
If you enjoyed the video, follow us, leave us a like and I hope to see everybody soon. Goodbye!